Let's take a look at Affinity Designer and creating a children's picture book cover. Now this is using designer only, nothing to do with publisher. And this is the iPad version um, of designer version 1.8.3 and in the middle of it version 1.8.4. There was an update. Now this hasn't affected the entire process except for 1.8.4 isn't dealing correctly yet with the bleed margins and margins in artboards. So we've got a bit of a mixture there, but if you've got either version, it will still work um, by the method that I have shown. So let's get right on with it, shall we? This tutorial was done entirely on an iPad Mini 5. So if you're concerned about whether your device will do this, it certainly will. And it's a portrait preset for designer for children's books that you can use anytime and it's suitable for the iPad or the desktop. Just take the exercise, move it to a desktop and all will be well. Subscribe now and never lose an idea again. Now what software will I need? You'll need access to Affinity Designer for this tutorial, which is suitable for beginner to intermediate users of the software. We're going to create the front cover first. Now this is interesting because you can use this cover as a print cover or an ebook cover on KDP, for example, Kindle Direct Publishing. We're also using artboards. So we can do the spine and back cover in the same file. So you're not ending up with three or four files scattered across your computer or iPad. So let's get to it. Create a picture perfect children's book cover. Fantastic. Now some notes. Standard sizes and page count. It doesn't matter if you're going through a publishing house or not. Children's books all need to meet certain technical criteria before you can get your book on shop shelves and readily accepted, I might add, in the ebook um, stores. Although you'll find that many online printing companies will print children's books in a broad range of sizes, very confusing sometimes, there are a few accepted industry sizes, that is, standards. If you size your book to industry-friendly dimensions, you'll be more likely to have your book bought by a distributor or bookshop. And the three most popular sizes for children's books are portrait, 10 inches by 8 inches, the landscape orientation, the, the reverse of that, 8 inches by 10 inches, and a square format, 8 inches by 8 inches. The number of pages in a children's book is also subject to general rules except when it comes to ebooks, but be careful with ebooks because the number of words or the word count is still important in children's books. Most children's books are 32 print pages in length, but some shorter books are 24 pages. So stick to multiples of four if you can't do the recommended count. Now the number of words are quite important. When storyboarding, stick to a maximum of 500 words for very young children to a maximum of 1,000 words for the slightly older ones. Now, I'm not talking about young people here, that is, teenagers and uh, other young people moving up from teenagers. We're talking about young children. So stick closer to the 500 limit, increasing the word count upwards to 1,000 for a slightly older audience, that is, out of the toddler stage. So let's begin. Create a large enough canvas for the artboards. Set up the document as follows. So set the size first. Set the document width. Now this is the document. This is the entire canvas. Set the width to 800 millimeters and the height to 600 millimeters. No particular reason for this, other than it gives you plenty of room to move your artboards around. So in the preset page size window, name the new preset children's book, 203.2 by 254 or 8 by 10. That's the preset. You can see it on the right hand side there. 
the DPI of 300 and the colour is CMYK slash 8. Now I've got RGB showing there but that should be CMY, uh, CMYK slash 8. For an ebook, that doesn't matter. Just leave it at RGB. For a print book, you definitely need and almost certainly should have CMYK. Create the preset by the standard methods. Now you just need, that's a landscape version there, which I just note is another problem. But never mind, because that doesn't matter with this. This is not the dimension of your front cover. This is the dimension of your canvas that you're going to put your artboards on. Okay? So don't get the two confused, because it can be confusing. We're dealing with a designer canvas on which we will put the artboards that contain our book cover. When the new document appears, go to the command menu. That's up the top left hand side. Looks like a little hmm, page folded over or a TV screen with three little dots in it. Create a new artboard and then in the Transform Studio, set the width to 203.2 millimeters and the height to 254 millimeters. That sets your artboard to the correct size for the cover. Now you can see I've got it there. Our canvas background is the document we first created, 800 by 600. But we've dragged an artboard onto that and made that our cover size. So we're not working directly on the canvas. That's a real no-no in this situation. Now this page will be the front cover of your children's book. It's always best to design your front cover on its own first before you create the full wraparound design. This will make it much easier for you to judge the impact of the front cover as it stands and it also allows you to better judge how your elements are aligned on your front cover. We can create a second page for the back cover and spine after we've designed the front cover but for now artboard one will be our front cover. The artboard created first is by default called Artboard 1, which makes sense. And if you only go this far, it'll also be your ebook cover. Ebook cover sizes rarely matter, except if it's too small. And then, of course, you try and enlarge it, it becomes pixelated and turns into rubbish. And at 8 by 10 though, it should be just right. Rename the artboard to Coverboard. So rename the artboard to cover page. Cover page or cover board? Take your choice. It's the cover. So long as you remember, it's the cover. Remember to do this in the layers command, dots, and you change the name there. So you go to layers where it says up on the right hand side, there's a circle with three dots in it. Tap that, you'll see artboard one. Just tap on artboard one and change the name to cover page. Place a simple white rectangle over the artboard as a spare. So that will show up in your layers as a spare rectangle. Why do I do that? To remind you to work with the layers panel. Now, you may be wondering about setting up the bleed boundaries, but with artboards, you don't really need them. Let me show you. Anything not on the artboard simply gets ignored and doesn't show up. As seen here, outside it doesn't show. You can see the circle there and it's dragged across the edge of the um, edge of the cover. Bleed lines, if the printer needs them, can be set up and are set up at export time. You can see the word this is cut off. So even if you had bleed lines there, it doesn't matter for your design. Bleed lines are for the printer because it's very difficult for a printer to get the exact measurement of the cutting blades that size the paper. I mean, they can do it within, within fractions of a millimetre. But if you've got a three millimetre bleed, that gives the, the, the stack, because they don't do these one at a time, as you can imagine. They do them by the thousands in a machine. So there needs to be a little bit of flexibility there. 
and that's what the bleed line takes care of. So good practice, you've got margin lines there, keep everything within the margin. If your design must go over the margin, don't go over the edge because you will lose it. Now having said that, the version 1.8.4 or 1.8.3 if you haven't upgraded yet, and a lot of people don't upgrade straight away I know, but 1.8.4 if you create your document with artboards turned on, your bleed, mar and bleed lines and margin lines won't work. They're fixing this, but at the moment um, it won't work. You have to create your document, as I showed you, 800 by 600, and once you've got that up, then you add your artboards, then your bleed lines and margin lines will work properly. So, having said that and emphasised it, the next step is to download a simple yellow paper texture image. In this case, I mean, you might have a different book, but we're using this as an example. So go to Document. That's the three dotted lines. Place image and choose your paper texture image and drag it out on a layer. Arrange the image in the frame so it fills it completely. Go to Effects and opacity and reduce the opacity of your layer texture, your paper texture, and reduce the opacity to 35%. Now you can see the blank, the, rec, the white rectangle up in the layers panel there, that was that spare I put there. You can remove that now if you like or leave it there to your, in case you need it for something. Now the grunge background I've got is the yellow one you can see there. You reduce its opacity to 35%. Return to the Layers panel and lock the Paper Texture layer. Add a Colour layer and set the mode to CMYK and set the values to 0, 23, 78 and 0. Remember I said when I created this document, if you're going to print mode, use CMYK. If you're going to use this as an ebook cover, you can leave it at RGB or you can change it to CMYK but put these colours in. CMYK are fine um, and you'll be following the tutorial. It doesn't matter if you mix them. When it comes to the final design, you'll know what you're doing. Now return to the Layers panel and select the colour layer. With the shape still selected, go to Layers, Layer Options and set the mode to multiply. You can see I've got the rectangle selected there and the mode is multiply. Return to the layers panel again and select the main or top artboard layer. You can see it's selected up the top there. Place margin guides on all sides at 20 millimeters using the guide studio and you can see that there. The margins keep your design centred. They, they enable you to work out accurately where your design sits on the front page, on the cover. You can see in the um, list of panels there, I've got lizard complete layer there, but it's turned off. We'll get to that in a moment. So for the moment, you've got the, the, the blank white layer, the grunge background layer, and a rectangle that's coloured yellow. Now, download this cute illustration of a lizard and open up the EPS file in Affinity Designer. You can see the, um, the URL for the website is there and that will download it. I'll put that in the description as well so you know where to find it. It's also in, a, in one of the other previous things I've got on doing a children's book in Publisher. Remove the background of the image and the lettering beneath the blade of grass. And you can do that by simply turning off those layers in the EPS file. Very simple. You don't have to worry about deleting them. Just switch them off so they don't show. That way you're not destroying the contents of the image. Set the document to transparent background in document setup and export the image as a new EPS file with a transparent background. 
that makes it a new separate EPS file. Give it a different name so you don't overwrite the original. We're going to use that momentarily. Choose Place Image from the drop down menu, choose the new EPS file, and open it. Arrange the image nicely in the frame. Now you can see I've got the image over the margins, but not over the edge of the yellow square, yellow rectangle. Lock the image layer and create the top layer typography. Now I'm using fonts. This is the typography layer. This Hitchcock font is a lovely tribute and it's free to download. Take the type tool and drag onto the page to create a small text frame. Type in the word the, setting the font to Hitchcock size 50 point and color to paper white. This is fairly straightforward. Copy and paste the text frame, set it below the existing word the, set paper to white, and change it to the word very. You can see the various layers appearing there. Copy and paste the very text frame, set it below and change the font color to red. Create a new CMYK swatch, name it red and set the levels to the following. Now I'll show you a complete swatches panel shortly. Copy and paste the very text frame, set it below and change the text to clever. Put it in white. Set the font colour to green, create another swatch, name it green and set the values to that and type the word lizard. You can see that there. Now create another swatch and name it jade with those colours. 74, 20, 56 and 4. And here we go again, create a new text frame and position it in the bottom right corner of the page. Type in written by and the author name and set the font to Hitchcock size 18. You may need to reduce that size even further because this is a fairly small page we're working here. Set the top line to a line left and the second line to a line right. You can see written by is left and Billy Joe is right. Use the jade swatch for that one. Now that you've completed your front cover design, you're ready to expand the cover into a full wraparound design, complete with back cover and spine. Exported to PNG for ebook or PDF for print, you're good to go for a front cover. And of course, you can design that any way you like. Go to the Layers panel and select the cover layer. Click on Duplicate. This will create a duplicate of the whole page artboard. Drag the duplicate to the left and rename it Back Cover. So you can see I've got Back Cover and I've got Cover Page. Back Page and Cover Page. Note that the name won't appear, well at least in 1.8.3, until you exit and then reopen the project. Otherwise the name stays as artboard. Even though it's changed, it will stay as artboard. Just exit out, come back in, there's the correct name. Not a big problem. Now if you're doing books, before you expand the cover, you need to work out the width of the book's spine. And there's lots of information there, which I recommend you pause and read. But because we're doing a standard 32-page book, on standard size paper, 130 GSM, we've added the page width plus page width plus spine width equals total cover width because our spine is going to be 5.8 millimeters. Check that as a standard. Make all your books the same. You'll never need to change it. So that's going to give us a total size of 513.8 millimeters. Now, as we're using artboards, we can keep all this as individual elements. And before I proceed, you can see there's the spine in the middle, the cover on the right and the back cover on the left. So paste the selection again that you use to make the back cover, reduce the width of the artboard and both elements to 5.8 millimeters. 
So make sure they're all selected before you try and reduce them, otherwise you'll leave some behind. Position between the front and back cover pages. You can also simply draw out another artboard of the right size as the spine. You don't have to copy and paste the spine, that can be a bit fiddly. Just make your own new spine. Now here's a list of the swatches we're using. The full swatch list. And to that we add a new one called pink and a new one called lime. We're going to use those in a moment. And you can see I've got the swatches named children's book, 8 by 10 etc etc etc. And there's a list of swatch colours in that. Makes life very easy when you've got a list of swatches. Those swatches only apply to this document. I haven't set them system wide. Now, select just the top coloured rectangle on the left side of the page and change its fill colour to lime using the swatches panel. You just tap it, click lime, and there it goes. Now, select just the colour shape sitting over the top of the spine and change its fill to pink. And you can see already I've got the text on the spine there. Add your finishing touches. A barcode in the bottom left corner using the rectangular frame tool. And if you want to know the exact size a barcode rectangle should be, you can find this on KDP and many other sites. <coughs> and the rotated text along the spine of the cover using the central guide as an aid for aligning it just right. Set the text size to Hitchcock size 11 point, and you may need to adjust that slightly. Now remember the Transform Studio on the right hand set of tools there, and you can use that to make sure you have the text box aligned exactly right within that spine. It can be a little tricky to turn the text on its side, so you might need to fiddle with that a little bit in the Transform Studio, but once you've done it once or twice, you'll be very familiar with it. And I won't go into the steps here. We don't want to make this tutorial too long. Final touch. Add an artboard of 412.2mm by 254mm and copy each of the three artboards into it. And using the Transform Studio, juggle them into place exactly. And you can see what you've got down the bottom there. There's no gaps. Everything's on the new artboard. The complete cover. You can see I've renamed it complete cover. Your cover artwork is finished. Great work. All that's left for you to do is export the cover as a print-ready file, ready for sending off to your chosen printer. Remember, if you've only done the front cover because you're doing an ebook cover, you'll already have that exported as a PNG file. Set up the bleed marks. Most printers need to see these. Select the artboard layer, go to the document panel and select bleed. Set show bleed on. You will see the bleed lines on the artboard. Set each side to 3mm. We only need a 3mm bleed, there's no need to have it any bigger. Now go to export. Choose PDF for print. From the format drop down menu, select current selection with background. There are other options, but not all of them are appropriate for this. But I find that selection with background works nicely. Include bleed, sorry, tongue-tied. Include bleed and printer's marks. Select OK. Choose the save location to save your new PDF document. You can see nearly everything's turned on there. Include bleed and overprint blacker slightly faded out. Now, I'm not too sure why this is, but it seems to work quite happily. There's your finished document, and you can see you've got the, um, not the bleed lines, but the printer's marks indicating the bleed lines. So you've got your cover and a fraction of white paper around it. That's what the printer wants. If you send this document to a printer without bleed lines and printer marks, they'll probably send you back saying you haven't done this properly. Better to give them everything they want than not. 
And that's it. Thanks for watching. And remember, if you would, subscribe to my channel. Very much appreciated. And that way you also don't miss any upcoming tutorials, and there are many of them, for publisher, designer, and photo.